I know a lot of gamers out there don't have much patience. What with Steam, Nintendo eShop, PlayStation Store, Xbox Live, PortGames.com, there's too many flippin' options! These days, gamers are forced to ask the real questions. Is this game truly better than Imagine Party Babies? Or is it just a 7.8 with too much water? Do you actually get to nail the princess in the end? Or is it just a cacophony of cockblockery? We deserve a game where you straight up buy a lightsaber off eBay and mercilessly slice people into shredded cheese spewing buckets of blood like fire hydrants from hell! A game where the mailman is a superhero psychopath! A game where you ride a motorcycle the length of a goddamn school bus! A game that can make you jerk off to its motion controls in more ways than one! A game where you murder your hot stepsister because you needed money for more anime and video games. Hashtag relatable, bro! I'm not crazy! You're crazy for just sitting there like a sweaty sitcom sponge not playing this godsend of a game! Because this game is real, my friends. It's so real it'll make your face explode like hamburgers heavily heaped and horrendously heinous horseradish. No more farting around. You've got to stand up for yourself. Take action. Use big words like salubrious. Punch trees. Get coconuts! Prepare for your life to finally have meaning, you insufferable peon! Because in this world flooded with no more options, we're left with no more heroes. I remember this game coming out when I was in high school. And just the thought of an obscenely foul-mouthed, blood-soaked, M-rated action comedy game on Nintendo was insane! I remember the game Mad World had a similar crowd reaction. However, its momentum seemed to run out after only a few months. It was just intense gore without much else other than that initial shock value. No More Heroes, however, was such a genuine surprise and all-around blast to play that it quickly became one of my absolute favorite games at the time. But that was over a decade ago. Do you still think that? I mean, it must mean something when we're still talking about it now when games like Mad World are out gathering dust. This game truly is the same obscene, absurd, irreverent trash that it was back then even after being ported to the PS3 and much more recently the Switch. And I love it. I love this trash! Assassin for Hire Travis Touchdown is fighting his way to the top of an organized association of ranked killers, cutting down anyone and everyone in his path. It's a hack and slash game at heart, but with a ton of extra crazy motion control based actions thrown in. And yes, even in the Wii's infancy, people already hated motion controls. But you've got to hear us out and get a load of what this game has you doing. Aside from slicing people open with violent finishers, you'll be suplexing and crushing your enemies with wrestling moves, swinging for home runs, hitting lined up guys like willing bowling pins, and recharging your beam katana by straight up... I think they get the idea. The game's developer, Suda51, packed in all sorts of tongue-in-cheek offensive jabs at silly motion controls, and still managed to keep the actual gameplay itself feeling fast-paced and engaging, though occasionally buggy with a semi-awkward camera and some questionable hit detection. One cool feature lost from the Wii version was the use of the Wiimote speaker, which you'd need to hold to your ear like a cell phone in order to hear. This is literally the only instance I can recall of a game creatively utilizing this otherwise useless feature. Anyway, the real meat of... Come on, come on! The combat is in working your way up through hordes of armed mooks in order to take down the ranked bosses. Whenever you kill someone, a slot machine rolls a random result for you, and if you get three matching icons, you'll get a temporary supercharged power-up after yelling out the dessert-inspired attack's name anime style. This game does have great, though occasionally quirky, combat, but it's absolutely overflowing with unique style. STRAWBERRY ON THE SHORTCAKE! You'll probably never hear me say this again, but I highly encourage you to play with motion controls if possible. It affects so much of the game, like what stance you hold your beam katana, that it becomes integral to the unique combat. Playing without it actually detracts from how the game was designed. Blueberry cheese brownie! Between levels, you'll be playing crazy odd job mini games and side quest assassinations for cash while driving there on your monster of a motorcycle. The overworld is disappointingly empty and underdeveloped, but is fun nonetheless, zooming around and destroying the city along your way. Cranberry Chocolate Sunday! Anyway, uh, you'll need the cash so you can challenge your next boss, so it serves as a bit of a roadblock to break up the action. This can be annoying, as well as a few of the boss's busted moves, but honestly, the gameplay still holds up pretty well, even after all this time. Now, Bomb, do you actually have something of value to contribute to this conversation? I just like cutting off heads. 
This game looks te <laughs> terrible on the Wii. But the PS3 port Heroes Paradise looked a lot better. But it disappointingly moved away from that intense cell shade to black style that the Wii game utilized to disguise its gross low-res artifacting. The Switch port goes back to that style and up the original game in a great way definitely making it the best graphical edition of this game. Though, the Switch version seems to have longer load times than the Wii, as well as screwing up that fun little loading screen minigame you could do with the Santa Destroy Star. It's all laggy and unresponsive now. But the game's visual design really shines in the various boss and world building designs. Though this game is on the short side, being a little over 11 hours, it's absolutely oozing with crazed creativity. So not only is this game graphically in your face, but it's over-the-top anime parody style subject matter is really what gives it its character. Blood spews out of goons like geysers. You straight up go Super Saiyan at one point, and combined with all the other obscure pop culture references and fourth wall breaks, this game is overwhelmingly and amazingly absurd. And clearly, that's not for everyone. This game is also occasionally sexist, racist, raunchy, anarchistic, and offensive in almost every single way imaginable that it's a wonder it's still popular in our modern age of overly sensitive PC toddlers. If you're nervous your mom's gonna walk in on you charging your beam katana, then trust me, that is the least of your worries with this game. Travis Touchdown is a creepy, arrogant otaku with no money, no friends, and no girlfriend, living in the corrupt city of Santa Destroy. After blowing the last of his money on a freaking lightsaber off of eBay, he takes up assassination work for cash, organized by the mysterious Sylvia Crystal. Turns out, Travis's target was involved in a ranked assassination organization, suddenly making Travis number 11 and a new target for other assassins seeking to acquire his rank. Since sitting around worried about getting murdered isn't cool, and being number one obviously is, he decides to fight for the top, cutting down any and all other ranked fighters in his way. It also kind of might have something to do with Sylvia promising our promiscuous anti-hero sex for making it to rank number one. What? Don't look at me like that. Now you just want to know if she does it or not. Well, you gotta finish the game to find out, perv. Best way to motivate a man is with the promise of sex, I guess. Well, Travis is just desperate enough to roll those dice and take on the top 10 ranked assassins in battles to the death for it, so... Yeah, it works. So, each ranked fight has its own crazy level theme and unique boss fight that makes up the story in an episodic fashion leading all the way up to the ridiculous final boss encounters. This story is absolutely hilarious, with its ludicrous characters and insane world constantly keeping you on your toes. But if shows like South Park or Rick and Morty are too profane for you, then you're better off skipping this one altogether, since the humor is such a huge part of the world of No More Heroes. The story itself isn't very much in terms of its actual plot, but it's all in the little interactions that add up in the end. Like the funny voicemail messages left from the video rental shop, the hapless Travis constantly falling flat on his face for trying to look too cool or suave, or how one of Sylvia's cleanup crew members always has his face obscured like freaking Mike Wazowski. There are even a few heroic or intense moments to be had here. Travis isn't entirely a bad guy. Some of his lines and epic delivery can just give you goosebumps. This is where it gets good. Good night. Destroy! That was quite a move. I'll admit you've got potential. If Challenge had a taste, you'd be quite delicious. Fight for the seventh? Yeah, sure. Bring it on! I love a challenge! But he's still a psychopath. Although he's such an unlikable, creepy, murderous freak, I think we've all got a little Travis touchdown inside of us just dying to be cut loose on the world. And that's what makes this journey feel so satisfying. Okay, Bomb, but we gotta wrap this up. So if you got any spoilers left to cover, you better do it and fast forward. So it turns out that- Not only Travis the fictitious Well, I guess that covers that.
This game sounds awesome. It's hardcore and crazy when it wants, and comically jarring the rest of the time. And honestly, it doesn't even care what you think. Calm down, Skippy, the soundtrack's just decent. Most of the best tracks are just remixes of the main theme, and it's amazing. And shut up, the rest of the soundtrack is pretty freaking great as well. One thing lost from the porting process was the jarringly calming K-pop-esque music from Naomi's lab. I guess they didn't want to get the rights to play it again for the Switch, but its crazy juxtaposition is what made it so great. I can't believe you actually just complained about that. It's a guilty pleasure, I guess. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm playing it now for a reason. If the government considers you an adult, but your family and friends know better and see how immature you really are, then No More Heroes was practically made for you. I'm becoming concerned with how commonplace the target audience of a broke, single, otaku, sex-depraved psychopath is for this game. Though you're missing out on a few of this game's quirks by not playing the Wii version, there's no excuse to pass up this outlandish Switch port if you miss the original. Do you work in retail? Well, before you act out your increasing desires to violently murder everybody in sight while still shouting the most vile profanity imaginable, try this game out first. The positive gamer in me adored the absurd profane slasher No More Heroes, ranking it all the way up to a 9 out of 10. Though the game definitely has room for improvement, the crazy world, characters, and hilarious interactions are all such a blast to experience that it's a joy to revisit even after all this time. I'd highly recommend you pick it up, drop a save, trust your force, and head for the Garden of Madness. The critical gamer in me does have some gripes with No More Heroes, but still sees it climbing the ranks to a solid 7 out of 10. There seem to be some unique quirks with each iteration of this game alongside some consistent issues, but nothing bad enough to claim that this game doesn't deserve the praise for its unique innovation and constantly creative above average performance. But what do you think? Let us know how your positive and critical sides rate No More Heroes in the comments below. But if you think this obscure motion control heavy Wii port from over a decade ago isn't worth your time, then you're just playing with yourself. All right, now we're not breaking eye contact. Do you have an idea for a new episode of Playing With Myself? Join the discussion over on Discord using the new Patreon perks to nominate and vote for future episodes. Oh shoot, I didn't do this. Always use protection, guys. Patreon members get first picks, so check out the links in the description for some more information. As always, thank you to our amazing Patreon members. Atomic Thomas, Cameron, Arrow, Kai, Ben, Rowan, Erica, Squadfam, Sid, and Denny. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Do you? Suplex!